Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy that you're here again and today is one of my favorite topics and it's where I nerd out a bit but today is all about the materials and what I chose and why. And just let me say right off the bat, this is not about fringe eco choices. These are actually better performing materials than what we generally do here in Canada. So let's get it going. So my main two priorities with these materials that I chose was they needed to be healthy to live in, to live around, and number two, they needed to be low embodied carbon, or as Lloyd Alter would call it, low upfront carbon. First, let's talk about the structure. I started off with conventional two by six walls, and instead of placing the sheathing on the outside, I actually used plywood and I placed it on the inside. Plywood off gases less, so it's healthier. It's also a bit more sturdy, and I had some 5 8 plywood left over. Obviously, this is overkill for the structure, but it was a healthier choice in this case. It also acts as my vapor control layer, so I just taped around the seams, and that was the vapor control layer on the inside. It throws a little bit of a loop to inspectors that the sheathing is now on the inside, but for structural reasons, it acts the same on the inside as it does on the outside, especially on a small building. On the outside of the two x six wall, I used a wood fiberboard. This is one of my favorite materials to use in carpentry. Here's a sample of that. This is 60 millimeter wood fiberboard that acts as insulation, it breaks thermal bridging, uh, and it's vapor open, which is very important. I'll get into those details in a later episode on the wall buildup. You can also buy it as a thin board. This looks just like an MDF. It's not MDF because it uses much longer cellulose strains with less glue. That makes it vapor open. I actually use this underneath the floor deck of the building. And just to show you, Wood fiberboard also comes in much thicker thicknesses. This one here is 160 millimeters or just above five inches. Sorry, six inches thick. Getting my chair all dirty. And for insulation on the inside of the walls, I use cellulose. This is a total no brainer. It's using post industrially recycled newspaper. I packed it in there densely so there's no cutting. It fits perfectly into the cavities. It also helps regulate indoor climate by absorbing moisture when humidity is a bit higher and releasing it when it's a bit drier. Total no-brainer. I'll show you some clips of how I installed it here. So that was essentially what I used on the inside of the walls, the roof and the floor deck. So to recap, it's regular two by six construction. On the walls, I used a 60 millimeter wood fiber board. I also use this on the roof on top of TGI beams. And then in the floor deck, I used this thinner wood fiber board underneath, also vapor open towards the outside. As far as exterior finishes, I showed you in the design episode that I wanted to keep two distinct spaces, the entrance and the office and I also wanted to reflect that on the outside. From importing windows from Germany, I had a lot of really clear pine left over. Um, they had screwed the pallets together so it was easy to assemble them and had massive quantities of this material. And I was able to reuse that and treat it as a Shosugi band siding. I first sorted it all for lengths, laid it out, gave it a nice bevel on both sides so that the water could drip away from the facade and then I torched it down and in the end I just treated it with linseed oil and it gave me a beautiful dark charred look. So the Shilsugi band I used on the one side of the building on the second side I used a fiber cement board. This one here is made by Finex. Um, you can actually see just a, a broken off section here and maybe if we look very closely you can see the fibers in it. The specialty about this board, you can see that it's quarter inch, but it's designed for ground contact. 
which means this is actually designed, it can be right up against wet ground. And the importance with that is I can mount it on the wall and even if rain hits it, there's no wood on the inside of it which can swell. That's one of the leading causes of why some of these composite boards will break down over time is it's just the wood that swells and contracts when it dries out again and that leads to premature deterioration. This is a fairly inexpensive board and readily available on the market and so I chose to do that. It's a bit of a more modern look, especially since I screwed it with screws that you can just see on the surface, but that's what I was going for and it fit the assembly quite well. And then the only other two choices that are worth mentioning here is that I used tilt and turn windows made of wood frames with aluminum cladding. They feel great, they're very energy efficient, the materials are very sustainable as far as windows are concerned. The aluminum could be recycled very easily. Uh, the wood feels well, um, but they have a very long life. They're probably going to last anywhere around 50 years. Um, we do have tilt and turn PVC windows in the rest of the house, and those are already 40 years old, and the wood windows are built stronger, and so you know that they should last at least that long. Then, as far as flooring is concerned, I just used conventional tile uh, on the entrance side and then in the office I used linoleum which I'm very excited about. I used to work in a facility in Germany that was also using that. There's a particular smell with it. It's made from natural linseed oil and so it is about as natural and as healthy as you can get it for the inside. Some people may not like the look. I think it's actually quite nice because it just builds one big clean surface. Also, it makes this place smell kind of natural, if you know what I mean. So that's the materials I chose in this edition. So what do you think about it? Would you have some, done something differently? Have you used wood fiber board in the past? And what do you think about it? In the next episode, I'm going to touch on the wall layers layer by layer and go a bit more into the building physics of what is going on and why that was important to me. So if you don't want to miss that, click the subscribe button. See you soon.